What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, I'm going to be criticizing people on my side of the ideological and uh, legal spectrum when it comes to abortion. And that is because after the decision, after the draft decision was released last week regarding what Alito and the conservative Supreme Court majority plans to do next month, there has been some protests and unfortunately a couple incidents of, of um attacks on anti-abortion uh, institutions, which is unacceptable, of course. So there's nothing wrong with protests. That's all right under the First Amendment. No matter what side of the political spectrum you're in, you're able to protest. And there's been protests all across the country regarding this decision. And that's perfectly fine. There has been some scuffles here and there uh, in the protest, but that's just that's normal. That's going to happen when you have people who are ideologically opposed to each other in the same place. There's going to be some, you know, shoving and pushing and the police will take care of that. But anyways, this stuff is completely unacceptable, and people on the uh, pro-women's rights side, the pro-abortion side, the pro-choice side should not be doing this stuff. You should leave the violence to the crazy Christians and the extremist uh, anti-abortion people who are usually the ones who are killing abortion doctors and setting uh, abortion clinics ablaze. So we had a couple incidents in New York and Wisconsin where vandalism happened against um, a couple of anti-abortion uh, institutions, organizations. So Wisconsin Family Action Center in Wisconsin was set ablaze. They tried to throw a Molotov cocktail into the building, which didn't work, so they set it ablaze, and they wrote this on the side of the wall, if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. So this is unacceptable behavior. Like I said, you should never be resorting to violence like this. And um, and if you, and the person who did this, by the way, should be arrested because you can't go around attacking buildings and setting things on fire. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but you should never take the chance. So the FBI is investigating here and um, the people responsible will eventually be caught so the the law will take its course but this is not the direction we want to go in okay and the uh, the violent thugs on the uh, anti-abortion side the anti-women side they haven't they didn't win because they did violence either the reason they're about to win now is because they got enough people on the supreme court to overturn it because of their catholic beliefs who are uh, which are also anti-abortion that's the only reason they're winning all their violence and this is a history of the murders and uh, fire bombings and attempted kidnappings and and etc inside the united states by anti-abortion people and you can see it's a very long list and this is a uh, arson bombing and property crime against uh, uh abortion clinics and doctors and uh it's a very long list okay um but nevertheless we should not be resorting to this the people who believe in women's rights and women's liberation women's right to just constitutional right to privacy which is what roe versus wade is based on like i explained in my last video where i talked about alito's horrible arguments the whole this is all about constitutional rights the first amendment of expression fourth amendment privacy ninth amendment 14th amendment uh in equal justice under the law due process all of that protects a woman's right to have to control her reproductive decisions just like men get to do you as a man get to decide whether you want to have a baby or not same thing applies to women not to mention all the other rights that are violating right to privacy being the most important thing the the, the decision of make, giving a giving birth or not or having a baby or not is a very personal and family decision it has nothing to do with the state has nothing to do with state governments as certainly has nothing to do with the federal government and nothing whatsoever to do with the supreme court so these are fundamental rights that should be provided but the conservatives have no respect for women because they're religious and their god tells them that women are worth less than men and they they should just be home having kids and you know running the household while the while the man is out there working. This is the kind of stuff that they believe. End up earning less. They're less ambitious. And I think this is sort of God's way. This is nature's way of saying women should be at home with the kids. Are They're you, happier there. I, 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 if you were a real feminist, you would support housewives and see them as the heroes. You and women who work wasting their time. Most women are happier at home. They are pretending that they like working and they're not making money because. They they don't stay all night at the office. They don't go the extra mile. Why they don't work all here? weekend. I'm You're making a mistake. Here. You would be much happier at home with a husband and children. Oh, boy. Oh, I mean, boy. I'm So-called traditional values that come from their nonsense Bible and their non-existent God. So this is what these... Uh, uh, these uh, extremists, anti-abortion extremists have done. Gynecologist David Gunn was killed in March 10th of 1993 in Pensacola, Florida. He was fatally shot during a protest. He had been the subject of wanted stop posters distributed by Operation Rescue, uh, which is an anti-abortion group in the summer of 1992. 
July 29, 1994, John Britton, a physician, and James Barrett, a clinic uh, clinic escort, were both shot to death outside another um, facility, the Ladies Center in Pensacola, Florida, once again. Paul Jennings Hill was charged with the killings. December 30th, 1994, um, two receptionists, Shannon Lowney and Lee Ann Nicholas were killed in two clinic attacks in uh, in Brookline, Massachusetts. John Salvi was arrested for these. And of course, we know about um, uh, George Tiller's killing back in 2009, which B- uh, Bill O'Reilly egged on by ki- uh, calling him Tiller the baby killer. George Tiller's family, in my opinion, should have sued Bill O'Reilly. Maybe they did. I wasn't paying attention back then. But uh, obviously, I heard about this happening back then. I wasn't making videos, obviously. But um, but they should have sued him for at least negligence as well as other things because his his very popular TV program spread the idea that George Tiller was a baby killer and, you know, somebody should stop the baby killer. And, and that's why this guy, Scott Roeder, went ahead and shot George Tiller after those segments had aired. And, and it wasn't just Bill O'Reilly. There are many other people who were calling him out and calling him a baby killer, etc., Okay, so those are some of the most uh, popular uh, attacks against doctors. And the last one here in 2015, a shooting at Planned Parenthood Clinic in Colorado Springs left three dead and several injured. So the pro-life people did an attack which killed three people. Okay, really pro-life there. Uh, Attempted murder, assault and kidnappings. August 1982, three men identified as the Army of God kidnapped Hector uh, Zavalos, uh, a doctor and a clinic owner and his wife, Rosaline, uh, holding them for eight days. So they tried to somehow change things by kidnapping a doctor, a bunch of morons. Of course, they're Christians. Of course, they're morons. And uh, George Tiller was shot but not killed uh, back in 1993 by somebody named uh, Shelley Shannon. So he was killed in 2009. But before 2009, he was subject to other anti-abortion violence by this woman who uh, shot him once before. He didn't die, luckily back in 1993 but finally they succeeded in killing him in 2009 so they finished job great job i'm sure god agrees with your murder of another human being but they're gonna say of course they're saving babies so it's okay that's the warped uh you know mentally deranged religious thinking that leads to actions like this Uh, another one, June 29th in 1994, June Barrett was shot in the same attack, uh, which claimed the lives of James Barrett, her husband, and John Britton. Uh, December 18, 1996, Calvin Jackson, a medical doctor of New Orleans, Louisiana, was stabbed 15 times, losing four pints of blood. Donald Cooper was charged with second degree attempted murder and was sentenced to 20 years. Okay, and some arsons. In May 26, 1983, Joseph Grace set the Hillcrest Clinic in Norfolk, Virginia ablaze. He was arrested while sleeping in his van a few blocks from the clinic uh, when a patrol officer noticed the smell of kerosene. So that's kind of similar to the uh, to the burning here, to the burning of this building. That's why you should not do this stuff. From either side, you shouldn't do this stuff. But the crazy, you know, pro-lifers are pro-lifers are going to try to kill people anyways. But our side, the pro-liberty, the pro-freedom, the pro-women side should not be engaging in this kind of activity. Leave the violent thuggery to the Christian lunatics. Okay, that's their jam. That their Bible is filled with violence. Their God is a violent a criminal. Uh, if he existed, luckily for all of us, his, their God doesn't exist, um, and this universe is free from his influence. But, but if he did exist, that would be very bad for everybody. Uh, but anyways, uh, continuing on here, 1986, six anti-abortion activists, including John Burt and Joan Andrews, were arrested after invading an abortion clinic in Pensacola, Florida. Florida just can't get a break, <laughs> causing property damage and injuring two women. Of course, um, July 27, 1987, eight members of the Bible Missionary Fellowship, a fundamentalist church in Senate, California, attempted to bomb the Alvarado Medical Center abortion clinic. Church member Cheryl Solinger uh, procured gunpowder, bomb materials, and a disguise for co-conspirator Eric Everett uh, Swalmo, who planted a gasoline bomb. So... Awesome Christians doing God's work here. Okay, and the list goes on and on. There's been a lot. As you guys can see, there's a giant list of arsons and bombings of, uh, of abortion clinics. There's also There was also an anthrax attack. So everything, uh, everything has been covered here. Okay, all right. So the point of showing all that was we do not want to sink to their level. 
So do not do violence. You know, make videos, criticize them, go on TV, criticize them, make ads, do whatever you need to do to criticize them without using violence. Do not firebomb, do not do any kind of vandalism against these people. Nobody understands your frustration more than me, but doing stuff like this doesn't help the cause at all. You're going to go to jail, just like all these anti-abortion people went to jail for their attacks. Nothing got fixed. Abortion didn't magically become legal because they, they attacked and killed abortion doctors. And the same thing is true for the pro-abortion side. Just because you attack these anti-abortion people, nothing is going to change magically just because you do that. The only thing these people are doing is turning themselves into criminals by doing vandalism and fire attacks against these anti-abortion places. Do not resort to physical world violence because you are the ones who, who are going to become a criminal and you're going to go to jail and nothing is going to change uh, with them. They're going to look like the victims and society is going to sympathize more with the victims of a crime than the perpetrators. So you're, all you're doing is making the pro-women's uh, rights side look bad by doing attacks like this. So do, do, do not ever engage in physical violence. Do not ever get into violent interactions with these anti-women people. Uh, they're violent and they're criminals and they're ready to do violence for their God. They're extremists. So you should stay very far away from them. Okay. Our recourse should be with the law and trying to change the system uh, entirely, in my opinion, to a direct democracy. In that case, abortion will be legal because more than 60% of Americans support Roe versus Wade and abortion. So your energy should be uh, focused on the long term changing of our government and the way it works so that we can remove the power away from these uh, unelected judges and from the Congress itself into a direct democracy system where the American people have have a say in what we do in our government. Okay, We don't need Congress or the Supreme Court. We can get rid of both of them. We're going to have to change the Constitution, but we can get rid of both of them and institute a direct democracy system where the people get to decide. That should be the long-term goal, um, which is instituting direct democracy so that all Americans can have a say and we can decide things based on as a country. We can just have a vote on questions uh, like abortion and many other things and ask the American people what they want to do. And the supermajority wins. That's the way things should work. Okay, so then we'll have to convince our neighbors, actually talk to people. We wouldn't have to worry about money in politics because all the politicians are gone. There is no Congress and there's no bribing of Congress by special interest groups. When we have direct democracy, we don't have to worry about the corrupt influence of money in politics. All we have to do is convince our fellow citizens that this is the way things should be. And American opinion has changed on many things when it comes to race relations, gay marriage, um, and many other different issues, women's rights, women's uh, right to vote, which used to be illegal. Um, so people change, people, America has changed over time to, to a completely different country since what we used to be back in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, right? So things change and people change for the better. And I trust the American people to make the right decision and they will be in favor overwhelmingly of women's right to choose if we put it up to a vote with a direct democracy. And we don't have to worry about these unelected people or even elected people uh, who are making bad decisions, who are not doing enough. The Democratic Party has been a failure on uh, Roe versus Wade. They could have codified it into a law long time ago when Barack Obama had a supermajority in the Senate and uh, the, the House of Representatives, but he didn't do it because the Democratic Party are a bunch of cowards and they'll never do anything to help the, their voters. OK, so th attacks like this don't solve anything. If you want real choice, if you want the American people's voice to be heard, the only way to do it is direct democracy, to get rid of Congress, to get rid of the Supreme Court. And so institute a direct democracy system where we get to choose what we want for our country. That is the way forward. And that's what everybody should be working towards. And, we, and if enough people believe in it, we can get it done. We can have a constitutional amendment that overturns certain sections of the articles of, uh, in the Constitution that, that uh, gives power to Congress. We can take the power away from them and give it back to us in a direct democracy. That's the goal. That's the best way to have control because Congress doesn't work. Congress doesn't do what we want. The Supreme Court doesn't do what we want, what the majority of Americans want. So, so what's the solution? The only solution is direct democracy. That's how I see it. Maybe people will disagree with me. There are some people who are, you know, who don't agree. That's fine. You're wrong. Um, but nevertheless, that's the only way to have real democracy, which is to have direct democracy. So do not resort to violence uh, no matter what happens, because it's not going to solve your problem. That's the main message. And the second message is if you want Americans' opinions to matter, the only way we're going to get it done is through a direct democracy. So everybody should be advocating for that and trying to get that 
uh, across the finish line, which is going to be very difficult. The first is the uh, winning of hearts and minds. We have to convince most Americans that direct democracy is the solution, that Congress and the Supreme Court are not working. Okay, so that's the path forward, but we'll see what happens. That's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. As always, peace. Gentlemen, the great hall of justice is now in session. Bring forth the accused. <laughs> Members of the council, Today I have received evidence that two innocent newsmen have been murdered by a senior judge. Judge Dredd. How does the accused plead? Not guilty. And let the trial commence. They are calling it the trial of the 90s. Mega City's greatest hero has been charged on two counts of murder, and the evidence sure looks damning. Born in 2066, Joe Dredd was cloned from the genetic material of the first chief judge, Judge Fargo. Having proved exceptional at the Academy of Law, Dredd graduated two years early. In 20 years of service, he's played a key role in public affairs, most notably during the Robot Wars. All right, mechhead, download this. Armor piercing. Armor piercing. <laughs> and his recent mercy dash across the cursed earth. The thousand-mile nuclear desert between Mega City 1 and Mega City 2, inhabited only by mutants. I've got a lot of people counting on me. I ain't gonna let some three-headed creep stand in my way. Engine on. Running. He's a lean, mean justice machine. He saved the city time and time again. The big question now is, can he save himself?